Hello and welcome! This is the dynamic head tutorial and I'll be teaching you how to set up a dynamic head for Roblox. So right here I have a head that I have already modeled. And ideally your model will have facial features that you can animate or pose. And first right here you have the head bone which is supposed to correspond to an R15 rig. And the root face joint, which is going to be the parent of all the facial bones. And the root face joint bone can be named anything as long as it is specified in the custom properties later. Just make sure that it doesn't conflict with other object names. Alright, onto the rigging portion. So here I'm going to start making bones and having them all under the root face joint bone. And here you can see that I have eyelashes, but I have them separate. It's usually easier to do weight painting without the eyelashes currently in place. So I usually do the eyelashes afterward. And without further ado, I'm going to be adding all the other bones for the face. Just make sure to try to keep everything symmetrical as it will help make the rigging process a lot easier. Of course, this also depends on your rig, so if you have an asymmetrical head, you do not need to worry about symmetry. And I think there is no limit to how many bones you use, so you can be as generous as you want with those bones. You may use more or less bones depending on the topology of your character and how many facial features you are planning to animate. More bones means more flexibility and more features to your character, so use that to your advantage. The only downside to having more bones is that you'll have to do more weight painting. So keep that in mind. Just use as many bones as you need. For facial features like the eyelids or the mouth, you may need more bones. Just so that you have that extra flexibility to work with. Especially for the mouth, because you're going to need to make a lot of different shapes for the mouth. You may also find weight painting and rigging a lot easier if the mouth is slightly open. Alright, make sure all of your bones are named, and make sure they're all named after the side that they're on. And ideally all of these names will have the side as a prefix to the name. And this will help Blender recognize that these bones are from one side. So here you can see I have only done the bones on one side of the face. And that is because right here, I'm going to do some mirroring on these bones. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to duplicate all these bones. Make sure your symmetry is off before you do this. And then in the bottom left, you're going to check flip names. And here you can actually see that I forgot to turn off symmetry. So I have to go and fix that. Yeah, and just put that off to the side. And select the side of the face that you already have in place. Turn symmetry back on. And hit grab, or hit G. And then left click without moving your mouse. And that will move everything into place for you. And here I'm just testing the symmetry. And it looks like both sides are working. Now here's a list of bones that you might need for your character. Make sure you have those. And with that, we have all the bones. When I was recording this, you can actually see that I forgot some of these bones. So I had to go back and add them later. 
All right, to get started with the weight painting, first you need to assign the mesh to the armature. You're going to parent it to the armature with control P and then you are going to apply it with empty groups. And before you start weight painting, you are going to need to go to the top left corner, open the edit tab, and then uncheck lock object modes. This will allow you to be in weight painting mode while also being able to move around the bones and select them. First, select the head and go into weight paint mode. And then after that, select the armature and go into pose mode. And now if you hold alt, you should be able to select each bone. All right, and back to weight painting. Make sure you have symmetry on. It is going to save you a lot of time. You can also go into pose mode for the armature and then turn on symmetry so that the posing is also symmetrical. And with that, you should be able to test both sides with symmetry. Again, you can save time if you wait to do the eyelashes after you've done the weight painting. And this is because you can extrude the eyelashes from the weight painted eyelids. Here I am assigning all of the non-moving parts to the root face joint. If you select a bone and the entire model becomes a magenta color, that means that the bone needs to be added to the vertex groups. And to fix that, in the properties window, you can add a vertex group and name it after the bone. If you have a part that is supposed to be only assigned to one bone, like the eyes, you can manually assign the weight in edit mode. Just select the mesh, find the bone in the vertex groups in the properties window, and with that selected, click assign. Now for the posing portion. To get started, you're going to have to assign custom properties to your head mesh. This is normally a tedious process, but there is a Python script that you can use to do it automatically. First, open the text editor in Blender and open the custom properties script. Here you can see all the properties that it will add, and these are all the poses that the face will make. Now with the head mesh selected, click the run button in the text editor and it will add all of those poses to the custom properties with their corresponding frame number. Now, for the poses, you're going to be using the timeline and dope sheet so you can create keyframes. The dope sheet window is useful because it will help you see the keyframes for all the bones. And with the dope sheet, you can toggle it to display only the bones that are selected. And with that, to get started with the poses, Open up the Roblox Faces Poses reference documentation. This will be the reference you use for the poses. Now run down the list of custom properties and create facial poses on each frame accordingly. All 
Alright, and with that, the posing is finished. You can see I have all of the keyframes for the poses down there, and those correspond to the custom properties we added. And for the next step, we'll do the outer cage. To get started with the outer cage, you'll need to download the template from Roblox, which can be found in the Roblox Creator Hub. And from there, you'll find the Cages for Bodies template. This is identical to the one used for layered clothing, so if you have a layered clothing template already, you can use that. Now to get working, first you'll need to take the outer cage template and separate the head. The head will include the neck, which will be two rows of faces. So make sure you include that. Now go and copy and paste the head cage into the scene. Alternatively, you can use the append option to add it in. Now that the outer cage is here and ready to work with, you'll have to fit it to the head. Make sure to use symmetry and to not alter the UV maps. If the cage's UV maps are not kept the same, you'll get errors when you try to import it into Roblox. Now with the help of proportional editing, match the facial features of the cage with the head. A good way to start off is by scaling the cage to fit the head inside it. Now the cage is all finished. Now just make sure you have everything ready for exporting. Really quick though, I remake the eyelashes by extruding them from the weight painted eyelids. But anyway, you'll need the head, the armature, all the poses, the custom properties with the root face joint properly specified, the outer cage, which should be the child of an empty called cage, and an empty called geo, although I'm not sure if you really need that. I just keep it around to be safe. Now, before you export everything, make sure your object names match what I have here. Alright, once all of that is ready, go ahead and export as FBX. You'll need the following export settings. You'll need to tick Active Collection and Custom Properties. Set the Apply Scaling to FBX Unit Scale. And under Armature, untick Add Leaf Bones. And under Animation, untick everything except Key All Bones. And with that, you can export. Once you've opened up Roblox Studio, go ahead and import 3D and find the FBX file you exported. From there, make sure you choose a rig type R15. And depending on the size you want for the head, you may have to select default, arthro, or arthro narrow. The size requirements will vary between whether you choose default or arthro. You can find the requirements in the Roblox character specifications document. If the head doesn't meet the size specifications, don't worry. When exporting from Blender, you can adjust the scale. This will preserve the poses you already have on the head. Once you have your head imported, you'll have to perform a head transplant onto an existing rig, and this will allow you to test the head. If you're making a dynamic head with a body included, you do not have to worry about this. And with that, go ahead and open the avatar setup and test the poses to make sure it is working correctly. You may also check the scale of the head in the properties window to make sure you are not going over the maximum dimensions. If everything looks good, you may add accessory attachments to the head using a Roblox character for reference. After adjusting the position of each attachment, update the Vector3 value of the original position under each attachment. To do this, you will take the position under C-Frame in the Properties window. Now to cover some of the errors you may run into, if the face poses make any weird movements, one of your poses may be incorrect in Blender, 
so you may want to double check your key frames. If the facial pose is overshoot or undershoot, the head is being scaled incorrectly. And again, make sure to change the scale of the head when exporting from Blender. If you get an error about the cage's UV maps, use the head cage from the cage template and copy its unaltered UV map to your head cage. This is done by selecting your head cage and the template cage in object mode, and then going to object, link slash transfer data, and copy UV maps. Now your head cage's UV map should be identical to the unaltered one. Now there are some other errors that may occur, but the ones I have listed should be the most common ones. Now with that, have the head separate from the body as its own model and upload it to Roblox. Right click the head model and click save to Roblox. Then from there, you'll be selecting avatar item. And for the asset category, select head. Assuming you don't have any more errors in this window, you're all set and ready to hit the upload button. Anyway, that's the end of this tutorial video. I apologize that it's a bit lengthy, but I wanted to cover as much base as I could. And with that, I wish you the best of luck with your dynamic head.